most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We are the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. The name of this program is Top 3 Methods for Controlling the Pain Makers of Back Pain and Sciatica. Now this is a video that's a part of a series of videos on controlling back pain with uh, and sciatica. Sure. So if you want to see the remainder of the program of the, the series, go ahead and go to bobandbrad.com and it'll be under the link, you know, for series or programs. Mm -hmm. All right. So as the, the entire goal of our program with back, back pain and sciatica is to eliminate the pain makers in your life. And we had an entire video on explaining what a pain maker is. But we do it, we eliminate pain maker by three methods. Number one is exercise. And one of the purposes of exercise, especially with sciatica, is we're trying to reshape the discs. Right. And you know, a lot of times you have a bulging or herniated disc, and we're trying to get it to no longer press on the nerve. Right. So the exercises are often very specific in the direction you do them sometimes or in the manner that you do it uh, so that it promotes and encourages that disc to go in the right direction. You know it's going the right direction because the pain goes down. The pain in the leg improves part particularly as well as in the back. Your body will let you know if you're doing the right thing. Yeah, and you'll know. I mean, right. But, um, this, the second reason we do exercise is a lot of times we just, just strengthen the, the back and the core mm -hmm. and really improve the endurance. Right. So that you can keep it out of, out of problems, you know, keep it out of uh, trouble when you're doing things. Sure. So uh, number two, the second reason, second way we use to control uh, pain makers is we change your environment. We might have you use modified equipment. We might change the height of your work surface. Sure. Um, we might use a, a lumbar support, Brad. Right. Do you want to maybe show how one of those works? Should we do that right sure, now? Sure, sure. Sure. So uh, this is a very common problem with, with back pain is a lumbar support can really do a, a tremendous amount of good. So here's two different ones. There's a lot of different shapes and styles, and it really depends on your body size, the chair you're sitting in. But uh, yeah, your body type. If you're a person with a kind of a large protruding behind, I mean, you're going to have more of a gap there, and yeah. you're going to need more of a gap there. If you're a, a thinner person or a slighter person, such as me, I don't need much support. Right. I, 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 I just need a, a thin one. Yeah. Or if you have a soft, cushy chair, you need a bigger one, a firmer chair, not so big. Can you see this, Mike? Does it show up in the camera? So, and you're going to adjust it typically around the belt line, but you're going to know because you'll go up and down and sometimes just a little movement and all of a sudden the pain will drop down. It's like, oh, that's the spot. Or it's like, oh, this is too big. You know, maybe you need something smaller. And you can start with a towel roll because you, you know, there's no sense in going out and buying these um, and get a towel roll to get a sense of how big. Towel rolls work. The bought ones do work better. They're, they're made for it. They're, they, they, curse, they got that. Some have memory foam. Some are. And they have a strap on them too, a lot of them, so you can strap them. To exactly. The so. so, well, and we'll be going over these more um, at a later, in a later video. But okay. right now we want to kind of introduce this to you. Of you know what we mean by change the environment. The third thing we want to use education just to teach you the correct way to lift and carry and push and roll and all these things will help. It's amazing. People, I see the look on their face the first time they realize that oh, I I can change my pain. You know, sure. I can I can do something different. Right. And it doesn't hurt when I when I roll in bed. Right. Oh, I just had a patient that he was just so shocked. He goes every time I move in bed it hurts. And I, I, we, we worked on tightening his abdomen and it, it went away. So, sure. all right. The, the other part on this video in particular, I want to talk about essential versus non-essential tasks. This is really important. Um, you want to cut out a lot of the things that cause you pain, especially initially. Um, and, and things like uh, cutting the lawn. You don't have to cut the lawn. I know you're going to say, well, who's going to cut it then? <laughs> and our answer to that always is, well, the same person that's going to cut it when you have back surgery. Because right. that's where you're headed if you just keep doing things like cutting the lawn or shoveling or, you know, lifting things that you don't have to right now. Anything you do that irritates it, that makes the back pain worse or the leg pain worse particularly is just making things worse in the long run. It's You're not going to work through it and get better. You need to 
cut those things out. Yeah, like making the bed. I mean, here you go. You have your excuses for not making the bed. <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously you have to get up in the morning. We want you to get up in the morning. You have to get dressed. You have to, we want you to try to walk. These are essential things, but the non-essential things, try to cut them out right, right now. You can come back to them later. All right, these are our final thoughts and kind of the rules on pain makers that we've kind of come up with. Number one, you do not work through pain makers. I mean, you do not try to see if you can work through it and make the pain go away. That's right. not what you do. We, we often use the phrase, you bump into the pain. Right, so, and then respect it and get back away from it. So if you're right. going to go out and try and shovel, it's only an inch of snow. <laughs> And it feels okay at first, but within five minutes, it's starting to hurt. Stop before it gets to the point where it hurts bad. Yeah, excellent um, point, Brad. Um, or, you know, you'll learn, but respect that and do not get into that pain, pain. You know, you need to avoid that at yeah, all costs. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons for that, and kind of falls with our rules, is the more you experience pain, you don't get used to pain. You don't get accustomed to it. It actually, your nerves become more sensitive over time. They, they start firing off you know, w without very little provocation. So, um, you know, the more you experience pain, the more the nerves become sensitive. The reverse is also true. If you stop getting all the, you know, these pain makers in your life, the nerves are going to calm down and, and your back's not going to, the pain is not going to fire up as easy as, 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 as it has been. Sure. So it's been our experience. Yep. So, um, I just wanted to say this as, for the, those of you out there who have been, maybe been told this, that it's all in your head. Um, I very rarely, rarely, maybe I've had one or two people in my life that it was mostly in their head, yeah, you know, sure. as far as a psychological issue. Right. In most cases, it's just the clinician is not finding out what's wrong with you. Right. I mean, it's it, it's right. not your fault. It's not in your head. There's a reason for the pain, and we're going to, you know, hopefully help you discover it. Right. So uh, constant exposure to pain makers can actually prevent your back from healing. Mm -hmm. So it's right. not just, you're not just toughing out and going, oh, I got a cowboy up and have, you know, I'm going to have some pain. <laughs> right. I mean, you, it might stop your back from healing, especially like if you sit in a slump position and you have a, a, a bulging disc or right. a disc. And it may not even be that irritating right now, but when you stand up and then it goes, oh, and you get that. And after you walk around a little bit, it feels better. It started from this, and the, you had some of the, the pain after that. So sometimes the pain maker is a little bit hidden, and it's right after that that it, it, it shows itself. And posture is a good example right, of it. Right, And that's why we often ask you to, you know, kind of gauge things by, are you having pain while you're doing it, or are you having pain directly after you did it? Right. It too. So um, as we mentioned before, exercises are – designed to help decrease the pain makers. That's, that's the kind of exercise that we're going to give you. Right. Um, pain doesn't always equate with the amount of injury you have. Like we, uh, we mentioned those oversensitive nerves. A lot of people, because their pain is so bad, they go, there must be something really bad with my back. You know what I mean? Sure. It, it, it's just, and they get, and that starts working on you psychologically. It's like, I need to have a CT scan or an MRI because my back is really bad. You don't understand how bad it is. I understand it's bad, but it might be because the nerves are oversensitive. Sure. So, and sometimes you get, get those calm down and things calm down. So, um, number eight, uh, only you can manage the pain makers. You are in charge. You, you don't want to rely on someone else to come in and say, how are you going to take my pain away? Mm -hmm. You've got to start thinking, you know what? I'm in charge. I'm going to do the things to take away the pain. I'm going to, I'm going to watch these videos and figure out what I need to do. Right. So right. it's just a better mindset to go in on with, with, with that type of issue. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So you can do this. That's right. Okay. We'll work you through it and get you back on your feet again. Yeah. Watch some more of our other videos in this series. Thanks.